Today we're talking about a comfy topic. It's a tool you've not heard of and you're going to learn something today. The tool is called S-Trace. If you've heard of it, you get a mark point. If you get five mark points, you can redeem them for a mark token. I haven't decided what to do with mark tokens yet. S-Trace is a tool for looking inside a Linux process. So you can run your process and then peek under the hood at what it's doing. It does this by showing you what system calls a process is using. What's the system call, you ask? It's how programs talk to the operating system. That's in my simplest terms. For example, the syscall read reads something, okay? That could be a line in a file, a string of text. It's reading that line. So when you cat a file, it reads the lines of the file, and then it will also write those, meaning write to a terminal, all right? Or read input from the keyboard. So when you type in vim, it's using the read call, probably, to read that input. There's also things like open, which is to open the file, right? Okay. Lastly, so there's things like connect to make network calls. There's a whole lot more others that we are not going to talk about today, but I'm just going to show you the basics. This tool is useful for debugging a running program. You can attach it to running programs or also just starting at the start of the program and then ending at the end. Um, it's mainly used for debugging purposes, but it's also just interesting to know what's going on in your system. Let me, on my ThinkPad here, Let's, uh, let's just do a little example, shall we? Let's just look at a simple command. S-trace. What's the most simple command you can think of? It's ls. All right. Wow. If we look here, these are all the syscalls it's using, right? There's an insane amount here. I don't know what they all do, but that's fine. Uh, you only... Normally, you don't care about what they all do. You just want specific ones. But, for example, the first one here, x exe cv. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That means start the program. So that executes a program and it executes user bin ls, which we've called ls, um, and it gives us some more information that we don't really need. But for example, it's also accessing this file here and then it reads some stuff, some octets here, some binary. Like there's a bit much here, right? There's even too much for me there. This is not comfy. This is the opposite of comfy. Uncomfy. <laughs> We don't want to be uncomfy, do we now? Let's just use one command. Let's just look at what it writes, okay? So if I do s trace dash e write ls, so that shows us only the writes. There we go. Look. So it, this is what s trace actually this is what ls actually does. It writes to the terminal the things in this directory, which, as we can see, are that there. So if I do ls dash l for a long listing, in my opinion, there should be multiple writes. There we are. So that's that's what. So we can see, we can debug the program exactly how does strace write all these files to the terminal. I mean, sorry, ls, how does ls write all these files to the terminal? It uses write. Cool. You can also use dash e, the dash e option to strace to um, group system calls. So if we wanted to do everything on like a file, we just type file ls. Uh, and then it gives us all the file op operations. So you can sort of see what it's accessing here. If there was like a config file, it would show that. So look, it looks at our SE Linux config. These sorts of things are useful. So one thing I like to do this for is seeing what network calls are being used. So let me just do something. S trace dash E network for network calls. And then we're going to curl my website, mark.minality.g. Go visit it. It's good. So you see all these connect opens some sockets here. Um, and then it also connects here. This is the important line here. You see, this actually puts the IP address in here. So this is the line that I like, the connect. Uh, and then it's received from there, sends to there. So it, you can see exactly what system calls it's using. Connect is cool here, right? So we, if we just want connect, again, we just type connect. Only connect. It's not a grouped call, it's a one call. So connect mark.mcnally.j. Bruh, no such file or directory. Oh, that was not a very comfy mistake, Mark. We need curl. So we see it connects there. Internet Azure connect, okay? So it does resolve that. Okay, that's cool, but we can also use this to spy. We can be a sneaky spy here. We can use this to spy on we can use this to inspect what network calls and what IP addresses our um, stuff is talking to, right? So I have an SSH session running connected to my server. So if I grab SSH for you, there we are. There's plenty of SSH servers running, but this is the one we want. So I'm going to take this process ID here, put that in my clipboard, and then 
I'm going to attach to it using strace-p for process, and we can attach to a running process. There we are. So there's nothing happening at the moment, but if I type enter in that terminal, something happens, okay? Um, so if I type ls, you see how it, it is, um, writes the s there, and then has read the s, and it also will write the l somewhere up above. But like I said, I can't demo it now, but the more interesting one is just strace-p and then like the process ID of some proprietary software like Discord, Discord process. And then you'd also put in dash e connect and you can like see what network calls Discord is making. Just Discord though. But this is a bit like uh, sniffing a process. You could also sniff it with like TCP dump or something, but we can actually see if the CIA is using our process here. Which would be pretty cringe if it is, but oh well, right. I am going to use Vim here and then also open up a terminal inside of Vim for terminal section. Um, <laughs> so we're terminal septing here. So we can get the Vim's process ID, which is the process ID of what we're using. Oh gosh, this is gonna look insane. But we can go s trace dash P and then the Vim process ID. So 11458, right? That connects to the running process, probably. Um, does it break everything? This probably breaks everything because it's Vimception here and it has now crashed my PC. Not very comfy, um, because it's S tracing itself. Oh dear, I have just, I've completely balked it. Probably because this technically would produce an infinite amount of output and crash everything. Is my computer on fire? I need to check. Sorry. Technical difficulties, please stand by. Oh dear, oh dear, this is n turning into not a very comfortable video, lads. This is the opposite of comfy. Right, not sure why I tried to get... It'll be fine. Let's have a look and see how not comfy it is. Alright, comfiness hopefully has been restored, friends. Um, oh dear. As you can see there. Oh, truth. I swear down on my nan's grave. Right. Ugh. Bollocks. Okay. So what I did there, it was true. It was reading itself. Which is giga cringe. Uh, oh, bollocks. This is the most uncomfiest video I've ever done. I'm not even comfortable. How long we got left? Bollocks, right? Not long. Anyway, uncomfiness. <laughs> that read itself, therefore spewing infinite terminal output, therefore not being able to render, therefore cringe. I had to use kill all to kill it. Uh, we'll close that for now. So I've got Vim open here. Uh, and for the purpose of this video, just believe I've got Vim open. Um, I'm using screen. So uh, Vim here, not sure how well this works because, but. Basically, I'm recording this not on my laptop because I don't have OBS in it. I'm recording it on my main PC and I'm SSH'd into my desktop using screen-x to share the screen so you should be able to see what I'm seeing on here because recording on here probably wouldn't be great. Anyway, uh, I am recording audio on here though, hopefully. Um, I don't have long. I don't have long. So, quickly, very quickly, um, I have Vim open. Right. PS Orcs Vim. What's for breakfast, Dad? Uh, so, <laughs> what's for... So, S trace dash P, this process, okay? Now I'm going to type in here. Hello. There is a too much data there. We don't want that. So we just want S trace dash P and then dash E read. Hi. Right, so there we go. Look, we get what I have typed in Vim. So, I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm going to split these screens and then show you something cool like this. So, we this shows you how Vim actually works. So whenever you type a single letter, H-E-L-L-O, it reads those. So this is now reading those letters there. So, if I wanted to save that or escape, it just reads the thing. Any command we're doing in command mode, it also reads. Um, very cool. Anything else to tell you about quickly? Ah, htop includes this command built into it. Uh, you can hack htop. Uh, quit, exit, go, vim, run, escape, live. Are we in, still in screen? Yes. Uh, htop. If I find a process like OBS, I can S trace it just by pressing S. 
There you are. Wow, it's all there for you already. You already have it installed. Uh, this is so not comfy. F8, it will auto scroll. Whoa. So this is recording itself, which is infinite output again, but this is how OBS is working, kind of. If you knew what all these meant, you could debug it or reverse engineer it. But anyway, it's useful for debugging. It's useful for just spying on processes. It's useful for just being cool. Uh, yeah, useful for debugging mainly. Also, to see what config files a program is using. You use the, you look for the read and then it reads the config file. <laughs> And then you can be like, oh, that's the config file you're using. Wow, that's so cool. Anyway, that's the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. More videos to come. Sorry, I had a break. I was really depressed. Um, anyway, that happens. That's why this video was supposed to be comfy, but it's not. Uh, bye. Love you.